All right, let me, let me just pray real quick. Father God, I just thank you for this time. I thank you for your presence here. I thank you for your people gathered here. I thank you that you've ordained this moment, not because we're anything special, but because you're a God who cares about details and you care about everything in our life, God. God, I just thank you for um, just your death on the cross, that we can just have this space right here, that we can have the freedom to worship you, that we can learn more about you, that you make yourself known, God. So I just ask that during this short time that you are glorified, you alone, Jesus, that you hide me behind you, that anyone who looks at me can only see you, Jesus. But we just glorify your name today. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. So, I'm going into my senior year at Asbury University, um, and Asbury has about a thousand or so students, undergrad mostly. Um, there's a couple master's degrees, but we're in the heart of central Kentucky, um, so there's a lot of horse racing that goes on there. Um, so that's a big program that we have at the university. There's also a film program, um, so a lot of my friends are learning how to use cameras, and they send a good bit of people to the Olympics every year. Um, so as that's kind of like um, what Asbury is about. Those are kind of the two bigger programs. Um, I'm in the Christian Ministries program, so we have about 40 or so people in that program. Um, and so we, ha we have chapels Monday, Wednesday, Friday um, at 10 a.m. And so these are like required for everybody to go to. Um, so it's not like... Most professors would go, but every student has to get like a certain amount of um, chapel credits. So that's a kind of <laughs> like a controversial system. And you have um, some student chapel checkers who will sit up in the balconies like, <laughs> oh, you're on your phone? Okay, you get half a credit. Or, yeah, yeah. So they're kind of like the Pharisees of Asbury because you look up, <laughs> yeah. So I have to admit, I'm, I'm kind of sneaky sometimes when I need to check my phone, you know, cross my legs a little bit. And, uh, <laughs> you know, there's a chapel checker looking. Um, so it's, it's, it's a really good thing that chapel's required, but also, you know, some people don't want to be there. I, I, can't, I can't say that, like, chapel's always been, like, amazing, you know. It just really depends on the speaker. Um, but this past February... Um, it was a Wednesday chapel. Oh, I have to give a little context. I've been on the chapel intern team this past year, so planning a lot of the logistics and leading a worship band for that. Um, so I kind of had an insider look to like the schedule and stuff like that. Um, so this, this past February, we had a chapel, and it seemed very normal. There was nothing spectacular about it. Um, if, if you were to ask the preacher who spoke, he honestly, he, he said in, um, afterwards that he kind of laid an egg with it. Like it wasn't a very good sermon in his opinion. Um, but the Lord had other plans. And so at the end of the service, like it's kind of a similar format to what you guys hear, like announcements and then some time of worship and then a speaker comes up. At the end, um, we just continued to worship, and it was about 20 of us or so. Um, I'd, I'd sat in the second row in my like prescribed chapel intern seat, um, watching out for chapel checkers. Um, but there, were, there was a different sense in the room, um, really peaceful, and I have to say, like some other chapels, we would stay a little bit longer. Usually it's like a 10 to 11 time slot um, that we stay in. But sometimes we had gone to 11.10 or 11.15, just depending on how the Lord was moving. Um, but this specific time, I decided to stay and just didn't think of anything of it, but just reflecting on how the Lord had blessed me, um, just, just worshiping in his presence, taking time to just reflect on him. And I usually had lunch at like 11, 11 a.m. because I had a noon class, but ended up staying almost that whole hour. 
and the, the band continued to worship and it was just a special place. There was nothing crazy going on. It was just people worshiping and just being with another. Um, so I honestly went to my noon class. Um, when I sat down, it was Hebrew too, so I immediately was like, why did I leave chapel to go to Hebrew, <laughs> you know? So finished up class, was very distracted. Um, and after class around 1 p.m., I went back to the chapel office, so it's a separate building. I got my lunch, because I didn't get lunch. Um, walked back, set my drink down, and I realized that the office is empty. And so I'm like, uh, where's everybody at, you know? Just kind of thinking. Um, and I thought, there's no way they're still in Hughes, the auditorium. So I walked back, and I can hear the singing from almost outside as I'm close to walking in. Um, and when I walked in, there were more people than just the 20 that were there. And there were people who weren't up at the original band on stage just worshiping. And it was so peaceful and joyful and people were crying and hugging each other. And I was really honestly confused. Like, what's, like, what's going on? Who's running this? Like, is there, like, that was my thought because chapel intern, I'm like, we're supposed to finish at 11, you know? <laughs> like, who's, who's doing this? Like, we got to get them off stage or something like that. Honestly, <laughs> honestly. But just kind of sat in the back for a little bit and just processed and just started to worship. Just sat there in a little bit. And at that point, some of my buddies came up to me and said, oh, we got to go tell people what's going on. And so I was like, ah, I don't know. Like, they're still having class. They're like, come on, come on. We got to go tell people. So we, we start running around the university like, <coughs> excuse me, professor. Uh, we have worship still going in the chapel. And they're like, uh, yeah, we have class too. <laughs> so we're like, uh, okay, can you come after class? Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll finish class. We'll come. So more and more people started coming into the chapel and just that spirit of worship, that spirit of peace, nothing, like nobody was actually like running the show. Nobody was saying, we're going to just keep worshiping. We're going to keep going. It was just a deeper hunger to see the Lord move. And we just all wanted to be in that space because we didn't know how long it was going to last. We just wanted to be in the, in the presence of the Lord at that time. And so it continued for multiple hours after that. And across the street, we have the seminary. And people started showing up from the seminary. We're starting to see some, like, unfamiliar faces. And it really got to the point, like, this, this is something different. This is not just an extended worship service. God is doing a move here. And in that afternoon, a guy, the grade below me, had, had just given a testimony and he said, I've, I've been so depressed this last couple of years. I, I've struggled to get out of bed, but I know the Lord has brought me to this school and brought me to new friends and brought me to this very place because he wants to meet me in a different way. And he just said, I'm sorry for not fully trusting in the Lord. And so it kind of had this pattern of like we would worship for a little bit, just sit in the presence of the Lord, and then someone would just offer a testimony. And we would do that for about 20 or 30 minutes or so, go back to a worship. And this just kept continuing, and more and more people are coming in, more and more people are recording on their phones, like, hey, come and see, come and see. It felt like scripture, like, come and see, the Lord's here, the Lord's here. Um, and so later in that evening, the, the preacher who had given the talk, um, he came back and started organizing, like, some prayer circles. Like, if you have anxiety or if you have mental health issues, let's pray over you. Let's help, let, let the Lord meet you in this space. If you're struggling with addiction, let the Lord meet you in this space. Raise your hand. There's no shame here. And when somebody would raise their hand to be prayed for, the, immediately people would surround them and pray for the next 10 or 15 minutes, praying out loud, just crying out to the Lord, help this person. Jesus, meet this person. And so... At Asbury, sometimes it's just easy to put on a front because it's a Christian university. But what, what we heard in those prayers was just people desperate for the touch of the Lord. 
people who had been walking with the Lord for a while or people who were just getting to know him, just becoming more hungry for the Spirit of the Lord. We didn't want to miss what the Lord was doing in that moment. And so a personal story, it was around seven or so in the evening, and the preacher had given a, a, um, a challenge, a prayer, or a call to obedience. And he said, if you have a wrong relationship with anybody, or if you have like a broken relationship or a broken friendship with somebody, in Jesus' name, go restore that. If you need to confess before that person what you've done wrong to hurt them, go ahead and like reconcile with them. And so this, that past fall, I had a really bad breakup with a girl. We had almost been dating for two years. And that, that fall was almost defined by that breakup for me because there was so much pain, so much emotional hurt with that. And I really had a bunch of resentment towards her. We hadn't talked since then, that past October. But the Lord struck a chord in my heart, and I knew what I had to do, but I was scared. I, I didn't want to talk to her. And then unprompted, a friend of mine comes up to me, looks me square in the face and says, Zeke, whatever the Lord is asking you to do, do it. <laughs> I was like, all right, you've got like a radio or something inside of you. Like, how do you know that? The Holy Spirit. And especially with the people hanging out and worshiping, it's like, okay, God, I'll, I don't want to miss what you're doing. So I found her sitting across the way, just said, hey, I'm, I'm sorry for the ways I've hurt you. And I know I've caused pain in your life. And we just talked for about a minute or two, just said, you know, I'm sorry to each other. And I, I went back to my friends and just started bawling because the weight of that had been released. But it also brought some of that pain back in my heart, you know. And we, we caught up later, a couple of days later, and she said, Zeke, you know, I had felt 99% healed from our, from our breakup the day before I told my friend, I feel 99% healed, but I just don't know what that one more percentage is. God, help me to like trust you for this healing. And she said, when you came up to me, when God prompted you to come up to me and apologize, that was that little percent that I needed. And I was just like, wow, Lord. And so that, that whole sense of reconciliation between people, between God, this was summed up in a phrase that was repeated over and over called radical humility. It just kept getting repeated over and over. Be radically humble before the Lord. Worship his name. Say, Jesus, I don't have what it takes. And even like people who have been following the Lord for 40, 50 years were just at the altar weeping, saying, sorry, Lord, I'm, I haven't fully trusted you. There's this sin in my life that I have yet to surrender to you. There's this reconciliation that I need this in my life that I need to give to you. And so more and more people through social media kept coming in. That first or second night, uh, university students started coming in from other universities. And the, the spirit of peace, there was nobody running the show, really. But just we had this cycle of come and see. Come and see what the Lord's doing here. Come and see. Repent. Be humble before the Lord. Be humble before your neighbor. See what the Lord has for you. And so that was Wednesday, Thursday keeps on going, more and more people start showing up. And Saturday, this little small town of 6,000 people that our university event was full of people. And it, it was honestly hard for us university students because like this whole concept of revival was not something like totally fresh to us because back in 1970, they had a similar outpouring experience where people were praying for the Lord to move on their campus in a special way, and the Lord moved for a couple of days, and people were repenting and confessing their sin before another and reconciling with one another. So the concept of uh, revival wasn't totally new at Asbury. So this was, this was something that God had laid on my heart a couple of years before.
when I got to the university. And this was not just me, but the Lord had prompted us to pray for a movement of God, specifically in chapel. And he had prepped our hearts for this. And I just want to read a little excerpt of a prayer that the Lord gave me back in September. And it, it, I'm not taking credit for this. This is the Lord imparting a desire into my heart. So don't, don't hear this is Zeke the prophet. This is the Lord saying, I'm going to speak. I'm going to move. Listen to what the Lord had to say in my heart. This is September 7th, 2022. Jesus, send your spirit to Asbury in a fresh way. I ask with humble boldness that you speak to people in preparation for your spirit to pour out upon us in chapel. Like the specifics. We thank you for all that you've already done and will continue to do. We are desperate for a special touch from you. I've heard many others express this yearning for you in a new way. Would, we allow, would you allow us to experience your glory pass by like Moses did? Jesus, give us dreams and visions to pray big things. Would you bring people together to pray for this campus and for you to show yourself? Show us your glory. You hold all things and know all peoples and details. Don't let us mess this up and make it about ourselves. This is for your glory and that you would rake in the scattered people and they may know you and your awesomeness. You are worthy above all things to be worshipped and you deserve the praise. So this prayer and so many other prayers have been offered by professors and colleagues of mine. Holy Spirit, just move in this place. And so more and more people kept coming and more and more people kept knowing the Lord in a special way. We, we canceled classes for a good bit. And that was great. <laughs> but as more and more people kept coming into the university, it was honestly hard for us university students because there were news cameras everywhere. I got interviewed about five or six times from random news stations. Like, hey, you're a student here, you know? Um, and so having all these people was like difficult. Like, man, like why is everybody just coming to our campus and everything? They're just messing everything up, you know? It was like we had just received the gift of the Lord, but we were immediately like, okay, God, this is my checklist for this revival thing. You know, like, like where are the lights? Like, we got to have a schedule, you know? Just already thinking of that. And I was honestly struggling with that. So I talked to one of my friends, and this was very wise. He said, you know, the people that were following Jesus, there were a couple of different groups. There were the people that were following the crowd just because there was something going on. That's honestly probably the majority of these people. Like, what, what's the Lord doing here? And then there were people who were critics, like the Pharisees, saying, okay, this is, this is wrong. Like, oh, they're not doing this worship song. Or they did this worship song. Or, you know, they haven't preached this verse or something like that. And the third group he mentioned was people that were just hungry for the Lord. And he said, don't look out at all these people who are flooding your campus and say, everybody's just here to follow the crowd. Welcome them in as Jesus. What would he do? He would sit there and wash their feet. He would serve them. He would get to know them. He would pray over them. So have this similar mindset, and that really helped me. And so there were so many healings. People that had confessed, like, I have this anxiety in my heart, in my mind. God, heal it. Healed. One time I was at the altar praying for three specific things. And they were very personal to me. And this random man who I'd never seen before comes up and says, Hey, can I pray for you, brother? I'm like, sure, that's great. And then he starts praying. Starts listing off the three things that I just prayed for. Just unprompted. And the Holy Spirit was just speaking to people. Come see. Come and be set free from this sin in a new way. Meet the Lord for the first time. Recommit your life to him. And so I had felt a nudge to preach the gospel message, to just preach from creation to the end of Revelation. And so I talked to some of the leadership and said, you know, I just have this burden on my heart. So they said, okay, we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll see what happens. And so... I'd been leading a, a good bit of worship. It was so fun to lead worship because, like, I would have an hour gap between class, 
And one time I went in to get my computer charger that I left in the chapel. And they're like, we've been praying for a keyboard player. And God sent you. And I'm like, all right, I'll do it, you know. So it was just like they would have a, a random group of people come and lead worship for an hour and then rotate, you know, kind of going through that. that um, it, we tried to, like, leave it in the Lord's hands, but we needed some sort of structure to help people um, stay organized. And so this, this one time I, I led worship for a little bit, and I was honestly in a hurry. And I was like, okay, I, I'll get my chord sheets pulled up on my computer. Um, I'll get it all figured out so I can have the right songs to play. And I was honestly feeling, like, arrogant in this moment. And one friend of mine said, Zeke, have you prayed before this? I said, I, I prayed a little bit. I'm fine. I'm fine. Don't worry about it. Yikes. And so went up, played, played keyboard for a little bit, and then not even five minutes until when I'm playing, the, key, the computer just dies at 40%. And I was like, oh, my goodness. And I just feel so tense and almost angry as I'm leading worship. And I was just like, what in the world is happening? I, so I go to my next class, and some people were talking about revival. And I, I, I had an outburst in class. I said, why are you so focused on that? Focus on the Lord. And the professor was like, Z, can you stay after class? I was like, oh, my goodness, you know. And so he said, what's up? What's, what's going on? I said, I, I just don't know. I'm just angry for no reason. And then it hit me that I was operating in so much pride when I was leading worship. And I wasn't depending on the Lord. So I really believe that I experienced some spiritual warfare because that pride in my heart was saying, you can do it on your own, Zeke. And so I just went back to my dorm. I was just like, Lord, I'm sorry for depending on myself in that moment. I'm sorry for not trusting in you. I'm sorry for putting prayer second. And he said, it's fine. You're my son. And so I was like, man, sometimes I beat up on myself. You know, you know, you make a mistake and you're like, ah, Zeke, come on. But later that night, I was eating dinner with my friends and somebody pulls me aside from the leadership and says, hey, come to this separate room. Like, we need to talk for a little bit. So I sit down and the only seat left at the end of this table was like the end of the table and like the university president like all the leadership was standing here and it's like this dark room. So I'm sitting down I'm like, oh my goodness, was that class time really that bad? You know, like what happened? Um, and they said, we want you to preach tonight. And it, it was so full already. I was like, okay, like this is the Lord answering this prayer, you know, but I said, you know, I, I don't feel worthy right now. Because I've, I've sinned before the Lord. I, I need to continue to confess this. I need to get my heart prepared before I do this. And so I said, can you wait till tomorrow? And I said, yeah, you can preach tomorrow. And so went up on stage, and it's full. We've got four. We've got the whole area filled with 2,000 people. We've got people outside just hungry for the Lord. And it was so humbling to be on that stage just to let the Lord flow through me. And, and I made sure to pray before too. I said, Lord, please humble me. And about a dozen people came to Christ because of it. Just, just like this picture, just, this, this is when we were praying over people. And this is Zach um, who would offer the first sermon. And it's so cool to see this. But just the hunger in the room and just when, when the Lord, the, I, I want to be very clear, the Lord was not like just present in this auditorium. One, one, one phrase that a professor used to really sum it up said, you know, God uses ordinary means of grace, like the daily walking with him. But there's moments where he will pour out his spirit to remind people of who he is. He said, this is that moment. It doesn't, it doesn't negate any long-term obedience. Honestly, it's, it's more impressive not, not to put on anyone's self, but the walk is harder than just a couple days. 70, 80 years of following the Lord is nothing, is 
just, if not more so, vital to the walk than experiencing him at something like this. And someone said, it's the accelerated work of God. God has not changed, but we are more hungry. We are more aware of him, his presence. We are thirsty after the Lord. And so more and more people kept coming in, and it flooded campus. And I've never seen so many people worshiping, worshiping all hours of the night, just hungry to meet the Lord. And honestly, even though I had prayed for it a couple times, I really didn't believe the Lord could do that, if I'm honest. I, I would pray for it and say, God, if you do that, that's great. But since then, I'm not like a superhero Christian because I've experienced this. Like, I've had my own doubts because of it. Like, was that really the Lord or was that, you know, something different? Or, like, sometimes I've just forgotten about what the Lord's done or who the Lord is. So I'm not here today saying, like, like once you experience this type of revival or outpouring, you'll be just a superhero Christian. But it has just impacted my prayer life because my understanding of the Lord was here and it's really here. Like our best understanding, our most complete theology of the Lord is nothing compared to his glory. It's nothing. And that's not to say he's going to be anything outside of his word. But that's just saying our understanding of him is so finite. And that's what really wrecked me about this whole thing. Because I had a God in a convenient little box. I said, God will only operate within this, within this area. You know, obviously with the scripture, I wanted to emphasize that. But I only thought he could do it like that. So this whole experience radically changed my viewpoint of the Lord. And I hope that this is encouraging to you all. As you continue to study, as you continue to teach, just ask the Lord, am I putting you in a box? Am I limiting my understanding of you? God, increase my faith for you. Increase my boldness for you. This can't happen every day, but what if my walk every single day for the next couple of decades of my life was so filled with awe and reverence about the holy God that you have revealed yourself to me through the person of Jesus, that I can know you, that I can walk with you every day. In the mundane moments and in the high moments of life, he was with you. That is something that wrecked me. He's not just there when, the, when everybody's looking, but he's there in your quiet space. And he cares about the details. He cares about the little things. And he wants to know you. So I just hope that this broadens your understanding of the Lord, that it encourages you to keep pursuing him, to keep being faithful to him. And I would challenge you, pray for this. Pray for the Lord to move in this campus. But as Zach Mirkrieb said, he said, the prize is not revival, the prize is Jesus. It's easy to say it, and it's so hard to say, this happened, pray for it. I wish I could give an A, B, C step of how to happen in, this, in Melbourne. Because you all know the need. I don't know all the needs of Australia. I've been here for a couple days. But you know the people in your circles, in the streets, on the trams, which are awesome. <laughs> you know the needs. And I look out and I see... And I, I can only see your face. I don't know your stories, but the Lord knows your stories. He's been walking with you for this time. He has you here for this purpose. He has you here to be encouraged by what he's doing across in the States. And he says, don't put me in a box. Take that step. You know what that step is. The Lord is challenging you today to step out in faith. Whether that's following him for the first time or continue to following him. Ask the Lord, where do I put you in a box and where do I need to see you move? God, move in this country, move in this place, move in this campus. And just ask him, give, give me more hunger 
for you and for your word. And he may answer it in something like this, but he may answer it in the small, still voice. So I don't mean to preach, I mean to encourage. I hope that the Lord just encourages you to take a deeper step in faith through this. So yeah.